Ford Focus is stayed 2018 present. Although the SUV seems to have conquered all in its path over the past few years, for many the estate is still the perfect car. Imagine for example that you wanted the excellent driving manners of the admirable fourth generation Ford Focus, but you needed a larger boot with a more practical opening for the family or dog or whatever your various needs are. Enter the Ford Focus Estate, a car 12 inches longer than the hatch and with a 608 liter boot, without a spare wheel fitted, as opposed to a 375 liter one. Indeed, to make the transition between SUV and Estate even easier for those in doubt which to choose, there are two SUV inspired trims, called Active and Active X, which deliver extra ground clearance and chunkier tires to match their more rugged looks. Engine-wise, the petrol options start with either a 99bhp or 123bhp 1.0 EcoBoost engine. Mid-range models have a 1.5 with either 148bhp or 180bhp in ST Line X form, and finish off with a 276bhp 2.3 in the ST. Diesel options are limited to either 118bhp 1.5 or a 148bhp 2.0. All models get a 6-speed manual as standard, and everything other than the 99bhp 1.0 petrol can be had as an automatic. As far as trims go, entry-level style models come with 16-inch alloy wheels, air conditioning and electric front and rear windows. Next, the tech trim offers infotainment upgrades and cruise control and heated windscreen. If you fancy something that looks a little sporty, the next rung on the ladder is T-Line is also worth considering. It has all of the ZTEX features plus keyless start, aluminium pedals, sports seats, 17-inch alloy wheels and more aggressive exterior looks. Meanwhile, as mentioned, active models will appeal to fans of SUV-inspired styling. Titanium has a long list of standard equipment including power folding door mirrors, keyless entry, front and rear parking sensors, automatic wipers, heated front seats and dual-zone climate control. There are also better equipped X versions of various trims and the top rung Vignale. On the road, none of the engines will set you pulse racing, but all offer adequate performance for hauling loads around. Refinement levels are good too, with most engines not causing a fuss and wind and road noise relatively low. The estate gets a slightly upgraded suspension setup, and in most versions it's a fine riding car, with the sportier ST-line cars being a little firmer. However, it's the Focus Estate's handling that is truly impressive in every version, aided by wonderfully precise steering. Inside, the driving position is multi-adjustable, and we love the uncluttered dashboard, layout and orderly instruments. Visibility is good too, and although quality is a little mixed, there are some nice touches here and there. Space up front is great, and that's matched in the rear, where six-footers will have no problems sitting behind equally tall drivers. Meanwhile, that 575-liter boot, when fitted with a mini spare wheel, is large and easy to access, with a low loading lip. ST-Line X and Vignale models have 18-inch alloy wheels that could be more liable to curb damage due to having less tire sidewall. ST-Line X has a diamond cut finish and Vignale has a chrome effect that could be more costly to repair than a regular painted finish. Style and ZTEC models miss out on parking sensors, so be on the lookout for dents and scratches to bumpers and bodywork. Make sure the paint finish is uniform, otherwise it could have been repaired. Check if there is any history of this if you suspect it has. Listen out for any squeaks and rattles on the test drive and make sure all the electrics work as they should. It's quite a new car, so it's still be under warranty if you need to get anything sorted. Make sure the plastics aren't heavily scuffed on door trims. There is a potential for the rear doors to open when the windows are lowered, with some examples made between the 12th of March 2018 and the 21st of January 2019. If your car is affected, it'll need to be taken to a Ford dealer to have the door release cable adjusted to prevent this from happening. The brake pedal hinged bolt on early cars built between the 19th of October 2018 and the 8th of December 2018 may not be to specification. A lot of the cars affected will have had this recall work carried out before being delivered to their first owners, but check with a Ford dealer before you buy. Owners of early cars have noticed a warning message popping up for the particular filter that's fitted to 1 liter and 1.5 liter petrol engines, suggesting that it's full. This should be fixed with a trip to the dealer to reprogram the parameters of the system. 
There has been a problem with the assembly of the rear door latch assembly on some cars made between the 16th of April 2018 and the 2nd of August 2018 that could result in the manual child door locks not working correctly. Speak to a Ford dealer about this, because they'll need to inspect the mechanism and replace it if your car is affected by the recall. Some of the bolts connecting the front suspension on some models manufactured between the 22nd of September 2018 and the 10th of November 2018 might not have been tightened correctly at the factory. Speak to a Ford dealer about this, because they'll be able to look at your car and check the tightness of the bolts if it's affected by this issue. There have been two recalls relating to a stud on the gearbox damaging the wiring loom to the engine. The first applies to cars made from the 21st of March 2018 and the 7th of March 2019, and the second for those built between the 31st of July 2019 and the 4th of March 2020. Any affected car will need to be inspected at a Ford dealership to have modifications carried out and repairs to the loom if any damage is found. A problem has been found with the power distribution box fitted to some examples manufactured from the 14th 16th of October 2019, which could cause a number of electrical gremlins. Find out if your car is affected by this, because it'll need to have this box replaced if it is. The bolts holding the seat belt mechanism to the car body might not be tight enough on a small number of Focus cars built between the 7th of May and the 30th of September 2019. If your Ford is affected, it'll need to go to a dealer to have this tightened down. The latest Focus went through some teething troubles last year because it was an all-new model, but things have improved this year to enable it to climb up to the ninth place out of 24 in the family car class. Ford generally does okay with most of its models, although the 18th place finish out of 31 manufacturers is a little disappointing. Unless you need a diesel for long-distance fuel economy, the 123 bhp 1-liter petrol will suit all your needs in terms of performance and running costs. The 118 bhp 1.5-liter is the best diesel option and is responsibly flexible once you've got past the turbo lag. Studio trim is a bit too basic, and since titanium doesn't cost much more than Zetec, we'd suggest you go for the higher spec model. ST Line is worth it if you want sportier handling, but ST Line X is a touch uncomfortable due to its bigger wheels. Titanium X and Vig Nail come loaded with luxury features but don't address the rather dowdy interior, and therefore don't make the Focus feel a premium as the Audi A3. Our favorite Ford Focus. 1.0, 125 EcoBoost Titanium. Well, if you are the owner of this car, then please describe the problems that you had to face during the operation of the car. Perhaps it is your feedback that will help viewers when choosing a car. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for attention. It's much work for you to describe to the channel. See you soon.